look, this thing of books, I want to read every book, I want to visit every place in the world, and I want to experience... I don't want to. I don't want. I don't want to experience anything. I don't want to enjoy anything. That sounds. That sound might sound funny, but okay. When there's an I, then I'm in. I'm in. I'm in a dualistic place. Yes. So as soon as I say, if as soon as I touch a thought, as soon as I go into my thinking, then the ego I is born. Yeah. The separated I is born. So as soon as there's an I born. The eye has what I call, like, um, I have to say it in simplistic, like, I like the Bahamas more than London. I like, um, I like, uh, I like donuts more than lettuce, you know. So, I like, I like, uh, I like reading about books on, yeah, I, I like, I like reading books on technology. So. But then, that is an ego preference, and it, or an ego, worse than an ego preference is an ego en enjoyment. Because if it's an ego enjoyment, let's say I like, I like sunny weather more than rain. So that means that I'm going to be happy when it's sunny and unhappy when it's raining. Does that make sense? So I've now got what's called, so I get an extra happiness when it's sunny, and I feel extra bad when it's not sunny. So that then creates what I call a dualistic up and down relationship to the world, yeah? So every time it's raining, I feel miserable, or I feel a bit, it depends on how, how much, if I really, really enjoy the sun, that means I really, really don't like it when it's raining. Does that make sense? Because that's a very strong thing. It means I'm super, super happy when it's sunny, and when it's not sunny, I feel very deprived. Does that make sense? Or if it's a slight preference, it's like, I don't particularly mind if it's sunny, but I, then again, I don't particularly mind if it's raining. That's very mild. So then it means that the up and down of how, how the world affects what's going on for me, yeah? So when I, my, that's gonna be an ego thing, I'm happy when it's, I'm extremely happy when it's sunny and that will automatically mean that when it's not extremely sunny, then I probably not feel as good. So I've created a, dual, a dualistic relationship to the world. So, so every time I enjoy something, I prefer to go to the observer of that which is enjoying something. And then that dissolves the dualistic, the du, the dualistic referencing of, of the world. I don't want the world to be the thing that dictates me being happy or not happy. I don't want, um, if it's sunny, I'm happy. You know, if, if it, when it becomes like a slight preference, that's better. You know, like I, you know, it's nice when it's sunny, but it's okay when it's not sunny as well. So that's going to be like, I'm going to be, I'm going to have less of a, a less of a, a less of a, a life with drama. Yeah, we're, we're, on, we're on camera, as long as you're okay to speak on camera. Yeah. There's not joy or guidance as well about your path. You yeah, feel joy. Better doing some things because you're meant to be doing that. Yes, no, that yes, I agree. Um, so joy, what what's called? Um, I, I'm speaking at the level of enlightenment. So when joy is impersonal, yes. So when there is joy, if one is in the, if one is not in what I call a separated state, i.e., identified with your thinking and body as a separated state. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is probably, it's not as black and white as this, but when, so when there is joy coming out of the eternal state, yeah, then that is, that is very good, yeah, but I'm talking about, I'm, I'm, so that, yes, I do agree with that, uh, and, you know, when there's joy because I'm eating donuts, yeah, so, you know, I've had a tough day and now I feel joyful because I'm eating ten donuts in a row, so that joy is coming from the separated ego, which wants to feel joy from an activity or a location or a music, which is, uh, so this is the thing, then this is why I say it, this is the one thing that I say over and over again in the group, uh, someone here has probably heard me say it hundreds of times, it's like whenever you have a thought that you want something, then 
then it, it means that because you, when you haven't got it, you feel, you feel like you want it. So as soon as you have it, you feel happy because you have the thing that you want. And then when you feel that ha and then, so when you don't have it, you, you're actually feeling a distressed state of not having it now. Does that make sense? So when you get it, you feel extra happy. And that can, that's also the basis of addiction. So it's like, I can only be happy when I eat a donut. When I eat a donut, I feel happy. And then, but when I'm not eating a donut, I feel, I'm really feeling like a form of lack because I'm not eating donuts now. And then I can become addicted to eating donuts over and over again. So that's different from being like um, in a state of infinite love. So you're in a state of infinite love and you're hugging and loving everyone. And there's joy arising out of that spiritual state. Yeah, but there's a different type of joy, which is what I call dualistic joy. Where um, uh, if you, even, even if I was feeling joyful doing service, I could go to the observer of that. Just to, just to dissolve any kind of dualistic relationship to that joy. Uh, wherever you are, that's a, that's a great question, wherever you are, there's often a higher level you can go to. Like, even when you get to spirit, doing spiritual things and you're feeling joy, yeah, you're doing, like, let's say you're making tea for the homeless people and there's joy coming out. Now, that's, that's spiritual joy. You're making tea for the homeless people in the streets. But I would still go to the observer of the one in me who's feeling joyful about making tea for the homeless people because there's probably going to be a state above that where, you're, where you release anything that might be dualistic in that relationship. So, uh, the intention of sainthood or the intention of service or selfless service brings joy, but the intention of uh, a sainthood or joy brings joy and it's a joyful life but it can still be, uh, it's still not, it can still be not the most advanced state. So because one is still a person, I'm feeling joy helping you as an individual person. And I'm again feeling joy giving you a cup of tea as an individual person. So if I go to the observer, you start to get, and you may even get like, I'm not doing service, so I feel a bit less joy now. So if I go to the observer of that, I can dissolve that and go to a higher state of spiritual experiencing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Uh, yeah, I, th I think, no, it's, it's a great question. I was t talking a bit more from the angle, but you're quite right to say that, of what I call um, addictive joy. Or also, even not even addictive joy, like I feel, I only feel, I feel the most joyful when I'm in the Bahamas. Even, you can, can you see how, how if you have that as a belief, I feel the happiest in my life any time I'm in the Bahamas. So if I really believe that with a lot of passion, and I have to live most of my life in London, it's going to create, it's going to create, like there's going to be a, slight, a slightly less joy in London, because really at the back of my head, I'm waiting to get to the Bahamas. Whereas, you know, the observer, or that inner state, the sacred state within, um, the sunlight of the spirit, as St. Francis says, what you're looking for is where you're looking from. Uh, when you, it's in dying that one is born to eternal life. That, that, is not, that is not the joy of being in the Bahamas. He's talking about something else. He's talking about a thing. So I was answering a question on, on do I want to watch every film, read every book, listen to... No, I, I personally don't. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But I want to have a state which is with me everywhere I go. And I want to do things that align with, with that state. Okay. Uh -huh.